I'm Christy with IPO with Justin Latanzio of Latanzio Wines. We just tasted through three of his Pinot Noir and we were blown away by them. First, I want to start with the Celia's Cuvée. Can you tell us a little bit about that and who Celia was? Celia was my grandmother who lived to 98 years of age. Um, and Celia is also going to be the name of my daughter who's born in, uh, who will be born in May of this year. Um, so I wanted to name a wine after a couple of the women in my life. Um, but Celia's uh, Cuvée is a blend of three different Pinot Noir vineyards on the Sonoma Coast. Uh, one is located in Annapolis, the other in Sebastopol, and then the final one in Occidental. What vineyards are they, and why did you pick them? What do they bring to the blend? The vineyard in Sebastopol is the Umino vineyard. Uh, the one in Occidental is the W.E. Bottoms Vineyard, and the vineyard in Annapolis is the um, Campbell Ranch Vineyard. Okay. They all uh, bring something unique to the table. Uh, the W.E. Bottoms Vineyard brings a, a little bit of a, a savory character to the wine, uh, soil, underbrush. Um, the uh, Campbell Ranch Vineyard uh, is, is not too much unlike the Lumino Vineyard. Uh, they're both just really close to the coast, cool windswept sites. They bring that typical Sonoma Coast blue, red fruit, cool fruit profile to the plant. So two of those vineyards you actually make single vineyard designates. So the W.E. Bottoms and the Lumino Vineyard. Can you start by telling us a little bit about the W.E. Bottoms? The W.E. Bottoms Vineyard is uh, a three acre vineyard planted just east of the town of Occidental. Okay. Um, it's planted uh, four by four, which is really dense for any vineyard. So um, there's probably three or four thousand vines per acre, which is double um, the density of most vineyards. Um, I get one acre of it, a few rows of each clone. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's surrounded by pine trees. Um, it produces a wine that's really elegant, a lot of red fruits, and again, like the, the underbrush, the soil mm -hmm. uh, character that the wine always has is really interesting, and it's definitely a unique site. And the Umino? The Umino Vineyard is located in the Sebastopol Hills AVA. Well, it's a proposed AVA. Okay. Uh, it's, it's southwest of the town of Sebastopol. Um, it's probably at about 800 foot elevation, uh, pretty, pretty steep hillside. Um, Definitely exposed to the fog and the wind. It's probably the uh, vineyard that I picked latest uh, because of the cool weather okay. and, and the, the age of the vines. Uh, they're about 19 years old, um, which for that area is pretty old. The, the, the farmer, Dave Umino, lives on the property and he's, he's obsessed about every vine. It's uh, nice. great to work with them. And you were saying earlier that you could train, you could go ahead and, and um, leaf the vines yeah. and you'll just do one example and he'll go through your entire, uh, how much is it, an acre? Uh, I, I have about an acre and a half. An acre and a half and yeah. so he'll do it to your liking and specifications. Yeah. That great. is critical for every vineyard I work with. I like to be able to be heavily involved in decision making out in the vineyard. So I like to spend time in the vineyards. Dave Amino is one of those great guys to work with. I can call him anytime, meet him at the vineyard, he's always there. Um, yeah, and like you said, I can go through and say, I want this and this and this done, and we'll, within reason, we'll do it. Right. Now, your first vintage was 2005, right? Yes. So, that was the first vintage of Latanzio. What did you do before that? Before that, I was uh, working at Copan Wines and Copan Custom Crush in okay. 2003 and 2004. Mm -hmm. um, I worked in the cellars there um, for two harvests, and I got to work with... Copan Wines, also at the time, uh, at that facility, Pozzoni uh, Wines were made there, uh, Dumal, Carlisle, uh, Mura, among others. So it was a great place to, to work, uh, to meet different winemakers, see different winemaking styles, ask questions, and learn from some really talented people. And then you did a little bit of a switch, which was go over the mountain to Napa. That's, that's <laughs> right. I got the opportunity to go work for a, a new uh, small winery in Napa called Ravana. Uh, with Heidi Barrett. Um, I couldn't turn that opportunity down. I thought it would be great to work with her and learn from her a little bit. Um, so that was uh, the vintages of 2005 and, and six. I worked there. So during that time you developed Latanzio wines. You developed your own brand. Right in that time I started Latanzio okay. wines with just 75 cases 
of the W. Bottoms Vineyard in 2005. Very nice. And um, your total production is 700 cases? Yes. That includes your Chardonnay and your Rosé and Yeah, and it's your primarily the, the three Pinots we're talking about today, but also a little bit of Chardonnay, a little bit of a Rhone White blend, and some Rosé. Excellent. Well, thank you for being here. It's great to be here.